For example, if we have a superconductor and we have a magnet, and we put the magnet over the superconductor and cool the whole system down, then we take the magnet off and the superconducting disk follows it. And we can rotate it just by hand and it will continue rotating under the magnet. So we have the magnetic uh, field which scientists say is frozen inside the superconductor. Well, well, frozen, the word frozen is not quite acceptable. This is a very interesting phenomena, uh, practically the same as uh, levitation, uh, but the mechanism of uh, all these things and the flux and the properties of uh, the electrons, these things are not studied in detail, they are not understood in detail, and even the mechanism of superconductivity, high temperature superconductivity, is not established and Nobel Prize is still waiting for the scientists who will give us the direct explanation of the mechanism of superconductivity. So it just uh, proves that the subject is too difficult and uh, too unusual to work alone or with a small team. We need the efforts of the international community. That's the key to success. Uh, NASA has uh, an, ion, an ion propulsion system. Are you aware of that? That, that, that? that particular system, they've got Deep Space One and Deep Space Two. Yes. Now that are being propelled by that. Uh, have you ever experimented uh, with using gases, maybe like a xenon gas, um, spinning the, you know, a, a xenon gas per, per perhaps? Uh. If we speak about propulsion systems, uh, I think that it's uh, better to refer uh, to another step of our work, which is called impulse gravity generator. And uh, this work attracted uh, not only the attention of NASA, but also the attention of Boeing, and uh, Boeing uh, Phantom Works in particular. They have a special research in this field. Uh, so if we uh, refer to this field, uh, this is a bit different, but based practically on the same mechanism. So we again have a superconducting disk, uh, which is made of two layers, but uh, uh, thermal treatment and chemical composition is a bit different, so we have a different crystal structure. And we organize um, a high voltage uh, discharge through this superconductor. And uh, it's a very unusual experiment. I think nobody in the world ever repeated it. Uh, so we use the principle of the Van der Graaff generator. And we have uh, the difference of voltages close to 2 million. Uh, we have superconducting material uh, which is cooled. And the whole system is in the vacuum chamber. And during the discharge, uh, again uh, in the magnetic field, during the discharge, the superconducting material emits gravitational wave or uh, a portion of gravitons which propagate in space uh, with extremely big speed and are able to uh, uh, provide some pressure or interact with the materials uh, in, the area, uh, in the projection area of this impulse. So this interaction is um, very short in time, it's uh, femtoseconds, uh, or well, let's say uh, one million of a second. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, this impulse which hits the subjects, or all the objects in the projection area, and propagates uh, um, further, not losing any energy, at least measurable energy. So uh, we began uh, these experiments about six years ago and our first article uh, was published uh, on the net uh, in the year 2000. And this is uh, the theoretical basis of this work was uh, done by uh, Dr. Giovanni Modanese. And this is a very serious research and uh, it has extremely uh, good potential because uh, this gravity impulse uh, 
is able to propagate with the speeds close to 64C, which is 64 times uh, faster uh, than the uh, speed of light. But uh, we have no limitations because we don't uh, work with any material objects. Uh, they practically have no mass. And uh, this impulse is able to interact with light. Uh, we mm, uh, made a rather interesting research. The results were published in the... Um, uh, magazine of uh, uh, it's the Journal of Low Temperature Physics uh, in August of 2003 and again it's with uh, Dr. Modanese. So this is another application of uh, high temperature superconductors uh, and their discharge and uh, the force of the discharge uh, can be um, uh, can be uh, rather strong at first, we uh, were able only to um, work with the pendulums and uh, just uh, only the best thing that we uh, were able to, to do was to push a thick book away from the table. Uh, it was standing, uh, just a vocabulary. Uh, but now when we started, uh, uh, when we were working with this program for several years and I have a very good team, uh, we were able uh, to increase the power of this beam, uh, so now it can bend metals, uh, rather uh, thick plates, and it can uh, create holes in fragile materials uh, such as bricks or um, cement or ceramics. Uh, and again, uh, if we uh, say honestly, do we understand in details the mechanism, how it works? Not everything, if not everything at all, uh, but we are working on it. And for the purposes of uh, space research and uh, for the communication, uh, very fast communication, we can definitely use this uh, impulse gravity generator. And we should also uh, study uh, these effects uh, using different approaches and uh, the most uh, complicated the most uh, precise equipment uh, that uh, we have that we have available in the world but we were, we were measuring the uh, propagation speed of the impulse we used a two atomic clock and we had the distance of um, slightly over than one kilometer so we repeated these results several tens of times and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, we got uh, very exact values. Still knowing the reaction of the scientific community or what we call politically correct science, we are a bit uh, afraid to publish the results openly, but sooner or later we will have to do it when we are absolutely sure. And uh, Again, I want to repeat that we have no intention to break any laws. And if we sp sometimes people say, oh, Dr. Patkletnev, you are trying to break uh, the Einstein's law. And I want, uh, even with the rotating disks, and I want to remind one more time that Einstein's theory of relativity is good when we speak about relative motion. So every normal motion is relative. But if we speak about the rotation about of the object around its own axis, it's not relative motion, it's absolute motion. And the theory of relativity is not applicable to absolute motion. Obviously you've worked with NASA a bit. Um, what, what practical applications do you foresee uh, the future for this knowledge here, for instance, uh, vehicles instead of on the, on the road, are they up three feet off the ground, moving around, are they space travel, does this answer any questions of um, black holes, you know, things of that nature? Well, uh, I can't say anything about black holes uh, because uh, mm. It's uh, a separate topic, and uh, again, I'm not an expert on this. But uh, if we speak about uh, 
new propulsion systems, definitely these gravity effects can be uh, used. Uh, and even at present, the knowledge that we have, uh, if applied properly, mm. can result in uh, very efficient uh, propulsion systems close to what we call UFOs. Uh, well, in fact, uh, I want to believe uh, that they exist and uh, I have nothing against. I have never seen one in my life. But uh, from the experience that we have, it's possible to make uh, the objects that will propagate in space using modification of local gravity field, using polarization of vacuum. And there are a lot of good theoretical works in this field and also a lot of practical works. But somehow this is a forbidden area, maybe because uh, there are some traditions in physics, uh, maybe because uh, there are some contradictions. Uh, also, mm, military uh, organizations are always interested in this. Uh, and uh, uh, simply, uh, if we speak about uh, anti-gravity platforms or lifters or whatever it is, people say there are some contradictions with physical laws. Well, there are some contradictions, but if we compare uh, quantum mechanics, which is a well-established science in physics, and general relativity, there are enormous contradictions between these two theories, which contradictions in formulas, in understandings, in basics, and the whole scientific world closes the eyes, they don't want to mention it. And by, by the way, th this does not uh, keep people from using both uh, effects. For example, we use uh, Einstein's uh, approach in atomic bombs, and we use uh, uh, quantum mechanics for all electronics and for our portable phones, and both things work but they have contradictions in theory and these contradictions are really great. So let's not be afraid of contradictions. It's quite normal. Simply we don't understand uh, physics well enough. And uh, this is the science which uh, uh, should... Uh, it's a subject to evolution. So new ideas, new understanding, deeper knowledge, that comes with every year. And at present we have good theories and in various uh, countries there are scientists who are working in the field of experimental gravity research. And uh, I think it's good to pay attention to those works because the future of our civilization and the future of modern physics will be in this area and it's absolutely clear now. Uh, also, gravity will set us free but freedom is only for those people who think differently. And so we are trying to think differently and I think we'll succeed in our research. And the history of science proves it because we had normal phones, then uh, cell phones, and uh, we had uh, primitive calculating machines, now we have computers, now we go to space, and practically there are no limits unless these limits are created artificially. And that's the thing which I'm afraid of. And there is one more saying, that uh, one more uh, interesting thing. Uh, people should approach all um, new changes and all new research fields with open mind. Because a mind is like a parachute. It only works when open.